Tips for sisters serving in Finland. Bring a winter coat. Bring boots. Bring most of your clothes with you. That was what I did and it helped me so much. You can definitely wait till you get to the country and buy your coat and buy your boots there. But as a missionary, you don't have a lot of time to do anything other than preach the gospel. You do have your P-Day, but that time is so sacred. And that time goes by so fast. Sometimes it was our most stressful day because we tried to do so many things in our P-Day. And so trying to take the time out to go shopping for a coat and boots, it takes time. And so if you can get those things before you head out to Finland, you'll be so much more prepared. And the quality of climate, of cold climate gear in the States keeps you warm in Finland. It's relatively the same. And you can get really nice things in Finland too, but they tend to be a lot more expensive. And so it's technically cheaper here in the States and it'll keep you as protected and warm in Finland than it would here. So that's one big thing I would highly suggest you do, is to get all your winter gear here before you go out. Um, another thing is medication and um, pills like that. They don't carry Tylenol in Finland. So if you can take all your medication that you'll need for the next year and a half with you, that means vitamins, take your vitamins, make sure you have a huge thing of D3 vitamins. Um, they call that the sunlight pill in Finland and it helps you so much. If you don't take your vitamins, you don't feel well. And if you don't feel well, you can't feel a spirit. And if you can't feel a spirit, you can't teach. And so take your vitamins, take your medications, make sure you have enough to last you for the whole year and a half. Bring lots of warm socks. You'll run out of socks and tights so fast. I think in a month I ran through three or four pairs of nylons and because you wear them every single day. And so bring lots of socks if you can bring lots of different pairs of tights. Ooh, another thing, this isn't essential, but if you can find skirt with po skirts with pockets, they're so handy because you can put your planner, whoa, you can put your planner, you can put pens, you can put the companionship cell phone in pockets, and it's so pass along cards, you can put those in your pockets, and it's so much easier to just dig in your pockets and pull something out rather than search in your bag or, or whatever you have. And that is just right there. Also, you're not allowed to wear backpacks. It's a first presidency rule. And so when you get a bag, there's lots of different bags, but make sure you get one that's sturdy, but one that is maybe has a thicker strap so it won't cut into your shoulder. And some of some of the really good bags that you can get, they're sometimes more expensive, but they're more of the outdoor gear bags. Um, but I got a just normal bag and it lasted me for my whole mission. Get a bigger bag so you can fit, preach my gospel and your scriptures in it. They're going to the stage now where they're moving into iPads and more technology. And so you won't have a whole lot to carry, but make sure you have a bag that you could put a lot of stuff in if need be. One of the craziest things about Finland is their consumption of alcohol. They tend to drink a lot of alcohol. It depends on the place and it depends on the person, but there's a lot of Finns who really like their alcohol. And so coming back from appointments, Later at night, especially on the weekends, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, there tended to be a lot of drunk people, which made life more adventurous and more fun because you would just talk to someone and they would see your name badge and they would say, oh, 
you're in Jesus Christ, or you're, you're with Jesus Christ. And he would say, yeah, I'm a representative of Jesus Christ. And they would say, oh, well, I'm at rock bottom. I don't really need your help. And <laughs> it was always funny just to, just to see the reaction. And because they, when, when they're drunk, they are not themselves. They are completely different people. They'll actually talk with you. <laughs> and um, it was funny because they would just do the most random things such as singing on the train, dancing on the train, and Finns do not do that. <laughs> they are to themselves almost like a cutout. And but when they're drunk, they are flailing, and it was so funny. But definitely, it was so important that I had a companion there with me because you knew that you were safe. You were always safe. And Finnish people, they won't touch you. They might say something to you. They might gesture in some way if they're drunk, but they will never touch you, and you are completely safe. You will never need to fear or think in a negative way or anything about people coming in attacking you because that will never happen in Finland. But definitely seeing the people who had drink, drinking a lot of alcohol, that was really funny to see <laughs> because they were completely different people. Um, the weather in Norway is relatively cold for a lot of the year, depending on where you live. Um, if you're in the north, like my first area was Trondheim, if you're living up there, it can get really cold and icy during the winters. And one thing that I wish I would have known um, is that I, I wish I would have bought more leggings, really warm leggings. Um, every day when we would go out to tract, I would um, have to layer a lot and I had socks and, and tights and a couple pairs of leggings, but I wish I would have had more. On top of that, I would uh, strap on boots every day. And I, although they're not the most fashionable, I loved my boots. Um, they lasted me my whole mission and they kept me really warm, which is important. Style is important, and but more importantly is that you're comfortable and you're, you're able to process light for the whole day long if you have to. Um, so I wish I would have known to layer more because obviously you're wearing a skirt which is not the warmest thing on the planet so you need to wear um, leggings, maybe multiple pairs. Um, I also had a, a really big coat, a good coat that was long and I really appreciated that because when it's windy you know it's, it's not short so you're, the wind isn't coming up through your coat and um, you're really protected so I, I appreciated having a really long coat with a good hood as well. Um, because it's, we would use umbrellas, but the hood helps a lot um, in keeping the snow out of your hair so you can still look uh, presentable. Um, there are a couple, I felt like it was two weeks that were actually warm, but there is a warm um, summer uh, in Norway. And the more southern you go, the warmer it is. But for that time, um, I think it's important that you also, besides just having your boots, is having normal, you know, sister missionary flats, some comfor something comfortable that's a little bit cooler. Because it does get really hot. Um, it's very humid in Norway, which makes the winters colder and the summers hotter. So be prepared for, for both. But um, err on the side of getting too much warm stuff than getting, you know, um, cooler things to wear. Because you, I think you'll need that a little bit more. Uh, there was a point I remember where we were required to wear nylons which can be kind of uncomfortable but um, try to get a comfortable pair of nylons that aren't you know too tight that you can wear that look classy. If you really care about your hair I would just suggest buying a curling iron or straightening iron when you got to the land because yours are going to probably going to burn out pretty quickly with the different um, frequencies. Also bring elastic skirts because you don't know if your weight's going to change, it probably will. Most sisters, even the most active ones, gained 10 to 20 pounds, um, which just comes off again when you get home, so don't worry. But I mean, you're, you're serving the Lord, you're not trying to look pretty for anyone else. That being said, do try and look your best because Danes, they all dress really nice, so so bring clothes that are attractive, but 
spring clothes that are maybe neutral maroonish kind of colors. I know a lot of sisters bring like bright colors, but they kind of stick out a lot, which is unless what you want to do, which is kind of important. It's generally pretty safe. There is one sister who kind of got a guy who was texting saying how beautiful she was, but I mean, she got transferred, so it was no problem. Um, just stay with your companion. Um, if you need to, call the elders and have them walk you home. Um, generally, sisters in Denmark, they always have elders that are nearby them. There was one set of sisters that this drunk guy walked into their apartment um, because the door wasn't closed all the way, and then they called the elders, and the elders biked over and got the guy out. Like He didn't do any harm. He didn't mean any harm. He was just drunk. Um, he <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a funny story. <laughs> um, my apartment burned down on my mission. So also don't bring things that are irreplaceable because you never know what's going to happen. Um, and you're not there to bring like your diamond or pearl jewelry. Like you're there to serve the Lord. So bring things that in case anything got lost, it'd be fine. Bring a good, like, like a really cute pair of sturdy boots because you'll probably end up wearing those like all winter long. Um, but also, like, it does it does get hot in the summer, so make sure you have some type of short sleeves. I didn't bring any short sleeves on my mission, and then I had to go to like H and M and get some stuff so I wasn't dying. But for winter, what really helped was like having fleece leggings. I brought a lot of wool leggings, but those all got ripped up pretty easily. But the fleece are still good bring layers like cardigans and stuff because you want your outfits to be like stylish and cute and have a little bit of variety but you're also going to have limited um, suitcase space so yeah bring stuff you can layer and mis mismatch. Something to know that I think is important is that sisters ride bikes so be prepared with the skirts you get I would get A-line skirts or ones that'll hang farther. Um, also, if you can find or make, before you go on your mission, a rain skirt, which we could purchase when I served, but I don't know if they're available still. Um, you just get rain coat material and make an A-line skirt out of it. And we had um, Velcro on the bottom, a little tab of Velcro, so we could Velcro it shut while we biked. And it just had a drawstring on the side. That kept us very warm and very dry. It likes to rain a lot. And you'll be on a bike in the snow and in the rain. And um, also you take the metro, so subway and trains and different stuff all over. But you're out walking and on bikes most of the time. So it's great. I loved it. Um, but I would be prepared for that.